Greetings, fam. This is your brother Usman. Back in April of 2020 this year, I made a video uh, concerning the coronavirus. And in it, I tried to show, it was a short video, but in it, I tried to show and illustrate that the coronavirus, as people probably know now, by now, um, is in a class of viruses which caused the common cold. Now, once I made this link back then, I knew just basically from my basic studies that once you catch a cold and you develop immunity to that cold by way of your body healing itself, you carry antibodies from that cold always. Now, in the articles that I'm going to read, um, they're trying to twist and bend the science so that, you know, for political reasons, I'm not going to get into all that, but for political reasons, they're trying to make it seem as if the body's immunity wears off. And in my experience, from my studies, that's not the case. So what I've done is I've found some more proof linking the virus families, the coronavirus, the supposed new viruses that are found, the L strain, the G strain, the GR strain, the GH strain, the S strain, the L strain coming out of Wuhan, China. These are supposed to be mutated virus strains that are more severe than the four classes of coronavirus that cause the common cold. Okay, and I'll go through all this really quickly in the video and I'll show you point by point what I'm talking about. It's all to buttress my narrative that the common cold has a relationship to this new coronavirus. And again, you'll see the connection, the relationship. Even if the relationship is based on a better immune response. Meaning that if you've had a cold from the coronavirus family, how then can a mutated coronavirus really be much more of a threat to the body if the body has uh, an immunity to that particular family, no matter what the mutation is. Because, listen, mutations only serve to allow the virus to attach to cells it has previously not encountered. That is the basis of a mutation. The mutation doesn't mean that the virus is stronger now the muta or, or that it has more symptoms or more it brings more illnesses. That is generally not endemically the purpose of a mutation. A mutation makes a virus attached to a cell that it has previously not attached to or makes it even more able to attach to a particular cell. So let's get into this and we will have further discussion after I show you the factual data. And before I do that, let me say this too. The body is always, always fighting viruses and bacteria. Every minute of every hour, every hour of every day. <clears throat> and you actually catch colds and you never know it. How many times have you woken, uh, have you woke up with a scratchy throat? Okay, thinking that you were going to catch a little something. Um, grabbed you some hot tea. Maybe some lemon, cayenne, garlic, or whatever your particular tonic or elixir is. And by the end of the day, you're good. Or sometimes you wake up and you may have a runny nose. You may think, oh, well, I, I've encountered an allergen or whatever the case may be. That is your body fighting something off. And that happens many, many more times than you actually catching a cold and getting sick. And what happens is... That could easily turn into a cold, but your body put in that work because whatever it encountered, it was familiar with. And it was, you know, your body's immune systems uh, was basically said, no, not today. So keep that in mind also as you watch the preceding or proceeding information. Okay, there are four common cold coronaviruses that we catch at some stage. There are four common cold coronaviruses 
that we all catch at some stage, we generate antibodies from them. Okay? So we all catch this virus at some point, the coronavirus in general. Okay? Their names are all too easily forgotten. Okay, I skipped the part. We generate antibodies to them, but our immune memory of them fades with over time or fades over time and we get reinfected. Okay. Now I want you to see that they remain, they remain very unspecific when it comes to time. Because you remember, they say we generate antibodies to them, but our immune memory of them fades over time. Fades over time. Does it diminish? It does say we get reinfected. That's what they say. Okay. But phase over time, how much time? Because if you designate a time, if you say they fade in five years, well, then we'll know that someone who hasn't had a cold in five years, if that's possible, if they tested for uh, COVID-19, then they would be out of the range for their natural immune system to be effective or to be strengthened against that coronavirus vaccine. I hope I'm being clear with that. But this is why they don't, you'll see throughout this article, they don't put any specific time frames. They're very vague when it comes to that. Okay. So the names of the four common coronaviruses, okay, that are endemic, that are, we generally get infected with, okay, the four common coronaviruses, OC43, HKU1, 229E, and L63. But our immune system may nevertheless remember them for a time. Okay, for a time. Again, we, we have no specific time. There have been hints that exposure to these common coronaviruses might offer some protection from COVID-19. Okay, very important. Mostly by looking at signs of immune memory in blood samples taken from before a pandemic. Okay, a study in the Journal of Clinical Investigation. I want you to know, even though this is the scientist.com, they quote studies from reputable colleges and universities. Okay, for example, this is one from Yale, I believe. Okay, but there's all of the people involved, the doctors involved, uh, scientists, and etc., are um, uh, quoted. Okay, so. Reports are the first clinical evidence linking recent endemic coronaviruses. Now, they get slick with the talk. Linking recent endemic coronavirus infections, that is the common cold, right? Endemic coronavirus is the common cold. To less severe COVID-19 and even a reduced death rate in patients, okay? So COVID-19, of course, is a new one. Okay, the authors at Boston University found evidence for this by poring over the medical records of thousands of patients who visited Boston Medical Center as inpatients or outpatients, most probably for respiratory illnesses. Between 2015 and 2020, each person had been assessed for infection using a PCR test that screens for bacteria and viruses, including the four endemic coronaviruses. So they were screening for the common cold, and bacteria and viruses for the coronavirus, I'm assuming. Now, it doesn't say whether there's two separate tests that, um, well, no, it says that P, that specific PCR test screens for bacteria and viruses, and it, it includes screening for the coronavirus. So this proves my point alone. Okay, I'm going to go further, but this proves my point alone. Because this test screens for bacteria and viruses, including the four endemic coronaviruses, meaning that there's no difference. The test is universal. These viruses all register the same at some point. There is some point up to a certain threshold that these viruses all code the same when they are found in the blood. Okay? The common cold and the new COVID-19. In total, 15,000 patients had at least one PCR. Of them, 800 tested positive for, I'm rounding off, 800 tested positive for an endemic coronavirus. This is the old one. While the remaining 1,500, 15,000 did not test 
um, for any documented coronavirus infection. Of the entire cohort, 1,800 later returned for a SARS-CoV-2 test. This is the new Corona-19, all right, COVID-19. Okay, and they returned for testing during the initial surge in Boston between March and June. Our study is for the first to examine people. Our study is the first to examine people with known old coronavirus infections and compare them to people who don't have any new COVID-19 infections. The infection rate for the new coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2, was no different between those who had recently recorded an endemic coronavirus, that is the, the uh, common cold, and those who did not have a test, meaning the people who had a cold, well, let me just keep reading. This led to the authors to conclude that a recent infection with endemic coronaviruses, the common cold, did not keep the new, so the old virus, having the old coronavirus, the common cold coronavirus, did not keep the new coronavirus at bay. Both groups were just as likely to become infected with the pandemic virus. So if you had a cold before and you had, you tested positive, you had the antibodies, you had the markers that indicate that you had it, um, that didn't, supposedly that does not protect you or that does not stop you from getting the, the new virus just as much as people who haven't had any, uh, who don't have any uh, SARS viruses or SARS antibodies in their blood. Okay, if they hadn't if they haven't had a cold or they haven't had these specific types of four common colds, which I don't see how because they say up here we've all had them at some point in time. Okay, but they're making it seem like there's a group of people who've never had this. Okay, they call them the ECVO, ECOV minus. Okay, this led to the authors to conclude that a recent infection with the old viruses did not keep new viruses at bay. Okay, both groups were likely to become infected with the pandemic virus. When the researchers peered closer at the data, they observed an important difference between the two groups. Okay, so they did find a difference. The COVID-19 disease is actually much less severe in those patients who had documented endemic coronavirus infections, meaning COVID-19 disease is actually much less severe when you catch it if you've had the old coronavirus, or if you've had a common cold, okay? So I'm gonna stop that here and go to another part. Okay, I'm gonna to go to this August 4th, 2020 article. In labs all over the world lately, scientists working on COVID-19 have stumbled, stumbled upon an intriguing sort of finding again and again. They found that blood samples from healthy people who were never exposed to the new coronavirus contain reactive immune cells and targeted antibodies okay, that could perhaps stave off COVID-19. They've found that blood samples from healthy people, not people who have COVID, not people who are testing positive for COVID, the healthy people who were never exposed to the new COVID coronavirus, their blood still has reactive immune cells and targeted antibodies that could help perhaps stave off COVID-19. Why are these healthy people who don't test positive? Because they're healthy. Why are their immune cells reacting? And why do this, why do they have antibodies? against COVID-19. Let's read on. These people may, it is still just a hypothesis, possess some degree of pre-existing immunity. If correct, it's even possible that this immunity has saved thousands from the worst manifestations of this terrible disease. This immunity has saved thousands from the worst manifestations of this terrible disease. Some of the first hints of pre-existing immunity came via T-cells, the white blood cells that destroy infected cells in the body or help other parts of the immune system target an invading pathogen. In one study originally published as a reprint in MedRiv, April, 20, April 22nd, 
a group of scientists in Germany reported an intriguing result. Out of 60, 68 healthy donors who had been tested for prior exposure to SARS, the new COVID, and who were found to be negative, 24 of them had a small number of T cells in their blood that reacted when exposed to the COVID-19 protein. Okay, it just said right here, they tested negative, but they still had T cells that fought off from immune memory, the COVID, the new COVID, right? If that is indeed what's going on here, one possible explanation would be that the healthy donors have been infected by another coronavirus relatively recently. There's no time span here. There's no time stamp here. Perhaps one that causes a common cold. Besides more serious diseases such as COVID-19 and SARS, human coronaviruses have been known for decades to cause what are usually milder infections. So what's happening when they say in the earlier article that, or let's, let's just say when they appear, when they say this immunity has saved thousands from the worst manifestations of this terrible disease, that could just mean that this new coronavirus is a mutation of the old and therefore, this new infection, even though it's mutated, does not affect the body as, as bad because it already has a pre-existing immunity, family. Pre-existing immunity. This is the common cold. There's a video I made called Something Ain't Right. Look at that video. I stated this way back then. So people getting tested who are testing positive could be testing Positive because of antibodies from the common from a common cold that they got years ago. So you ask me, what is the problem with being tested? Or just being tested? Well, on his face, nothing. Testing on his face is nothing. But let's let's look at the method of testing. So one of my questions would be this. This is the Los Angeles County government site. Frequently asked questions about the vaccine. Okay, COVID-19, LACounty.gov. So these are the procedures for the test. The nose is very common to get a sample from the nose. There are two ways, two ways that samples from the nose are being collected. The most common way is for the sample to be taken from the front of the nose. This is a self-administered administered test, meaning the person taking the test collects the sample on their own. It is much more comfortable than the sample taken from the back of the nose. My question is, why are there two samples? From one from the front and one from the back? Because in the back of the nose, they go directly to an olfactory plate, where it's a very thin membrane which is actually where infections occur. This is how the virus is transmitted to the um, to the body because it gets past the villi and the nose where there's a mucus lining and the villi. Between those two, they generally kill most germs that enter there. So this back of the nose sample bypasses a protective measure and goes directly to the sensitive part, which is a thin, unprotected membrane right in between the nose and the brain, basically. So I'm not saying that that is an administration point for a virus because we would guess that these swabs don't contain any virus. But again, in answering questions, among the questions about what type of test uh, it is, be it a PCR test or antibody or any other type of test, or if the DNA collected is kept, right? another question we might want to ask. But among those questions, the question of really what is the difference between these, why the necessity 
for one and not the other. If the most comfortable one is effective, then why dig far back into the nose to a more sensitive part? Wouldn't just general precaution preclude you from doing that? Just a question. Because we know there is a nasal vaccine delivery system, of course, right? They can do vaccinations through the nose, as we see. And there's even been some suggestion that maybe people are being vaccinated through these nasal swabs. And you know what I would like is a government agency to deny it, not organizations that are not connected to the government. I would like to see the government deny that this is being done. Not saying it is, but I would like to see them address that rather than these other places, these other entities. All right. So yeah, nasal vaccines are very um, prominent and will probably become more so. So it's not like viruses cannot be delivered through the nose. I'm just saying. So my questions are these. When you get tested, whether you get a PCR or antibodies test, and I guess this will apply more with antibodies tests. First of all, you should know what type of test you're getting. If people are getting tested, they should know what type of test they're getting because then they know what to expect in the results. If you get if you get a PCR test and you have live bacteria, um, or not bacteria, viruses in your system, I mean, for all for all intents and purposes, you could have the common cold. You could have a new upgraded common cold, but I guess. The new upgraded common cold is the coronavirus. Okay, we'll we'll go with that. But if you get an antibodies test and you become positive, well, we see that if you've had the common cold recently, an endemic coronavirus, they put it a recent endemic coronavirus. If you've had that, you could have antibodies that will react to a new test. We saw it in the articles we read. You could have had the common cold back in the day and test positive. What tests are they giving you? Are they telling people? Is there a designation between those four common coronaviruses that we saw? The OC43, the HKU1, the 229E, and the NL63. Is there any indication on the tests? That those are the four strains that they're detecting, or are they specifically detecting the new S, the new SARS? I think it's the G strain, the L strain, the S strain, the GH strain, and the GR strain. Uh, if I'm correct, is the specific strain indicated? If not, then how do we know exactly what these antibodies are responding to, or how do we know where these antibodies come from? What strain? Um, were these what strain created these antibodies? Because these strains were created from one of the old uh, antibodies, the old four. Well, then when you test and you see those specific antibodies, you know that they're just detecting that you've had the common cold. But we have no way of knowing this because the test is so very vague. So what are the main takeaways here? Fam, at this particular point in time, I would suggest you make staying healthy a life regimen, a life study. Okay. There was a part in the movie called After Earth with Will Smith and Jaden Smith where Will Smith said, Earth has evolved, and I'm paraphrasing, Earth has evolved 
to be hostile to humans. And I think that's an allegory for what's happening because if you look, we're basically in an insane asylum. Okay. I, per I particularly don't speak on this channel at this time about a lot of the things that's going on. I try to stick with the health, but I'm fully aware of the absolute decimation of sanity, morality, and ethics. And you have to be as well. And you cannot fall victim to fear because it is very, very powerful. That is why they seek to keep so much of the population in that particular state because it feeds people. It feeds people who know how to reach into that particular emotion spiritually and gain energy from it. Um, not only does it allow them to gain energy by being able to, to manipulate people into doing things that they don't want to do, but they actually do get a spiritual boost from it. Now, I'm not telling you to take this lightly. Uh, any type of sickness is to be taken seriously. I'm not telling you not to get tested. I'm simply giving you facts and data that you probably won't find in many other areas. I'm obligated to do that. So until next time, family, peace. If you learned from this video, help support the study in time to bring this knowledge to our community. It does take time and effort to be concise and as accurate as possible so that we can stay abreast of important health information and techniques. Please visit the site and follow these links.